Good evening and welcome to Inside Dentistry's One-on-One -on -one with Dr. Detola. Hey, that's me. Tonight, we are joined by my friend, Dr. Rod Kurthy, who will discuss oh, bleaching in every possible way that you can ever imagine it being discussed. This program is supported commercially by Evolve Dental Technologies. Dr. Kurthy practiced dentistry in Southern California for 38 years and is the CEO and founder of Evolve Dental Technologies. Rod, thank you so much for taking some time out of your schedule to speak with us tonight. Well, it's always fun to be with you, Mike. Appreciate it. And fun to be, yeah, fun to be with um, you as well. You are my whitening mentor. I think you're, you know, when I think of whitening and the legends in whitening, I think of Van Haywood and I think of you, Rod. I don't know if there's other ones that are out there, other people who have, uh, done as much as you two have, but I think it's fantastic. And uh, for me, I've had kind of a rebirth of excitement with whitening again, as I've gotten involved with, with clear aligners and moving teeth around and putting teeth in the right position. And patients are really happy mm -hmm. about how their teeth look, but I want patients who are super enthused and who are going to go tell all their friends and who you're just going to be able to tell when you look at their smile that something changed. And that can be true with aligners and orthodontics to make that happen. But to close it all off with uh, whitening that's super effective and get some and it gets the type of amazing results that you'll be sharing with us later. Well, that's kind of rekindled my interest in uh, in whitening like this and what we can do and and pushing the limits and really getting serious about this because you know giving out tubes here and there to people it's one thing and uh, I don't know it seems like what you have done is really. I think of, you know, we talk about marginal gains in sports where there's certain teams that I just want to do this half a percent better, or this 1% better, this 2% better. And the Patriots are a good example of, of marginal gains. And uh, I think marginal gains is exactly what you've done with, with core whitening. Because it's not just this one little thing. It's not just the refrigerated gel. It's not just this. It's not that. It's, it's everything together and all these marginal gains. And, um, you know, you beware trying to say, oh, I'm going to take this and this and not use the rest of it. Master it the way it was intended first before you go off the reservation. But I know you've always said that the first step to whitening is having a system that genuinely works on every type of case uh, every time. You know, why is that not necessarily a given and why is that so important? Well, before I answer that, Mike, I'll, I'll say that. You gave a great summary, and I think you said enough just now that we don't even need to do this webinar. <laughs> <laughs> well, I left anyway. all the details out. That's your job, Rod. Right? <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, to answer your question, um, as everybody's seen, uh, typical whitening systems tend to give results that are less than impressive. And um, the importance of whitening for patients is more than many dentists realize. Uh, for instance, you know, if you offer, or for dentists who offer free whitening in their marketing, it's going to lead to a big problem because it's always cracked me up to see dentists advertising free whitening as their call to action in marketing. And then they go on Dental Town or they ask their friends, oh, how do I do the cheapest, easiest, fastest um, whitening because I'm giving it away for free? And I ask them, well, why aren't you concerned about the results you're going to get on these new, new patients? And they say, oh, since the whitening's free, they're not really expecting much. Are you kidding me? So th the reality is that the dentist has spent a lot of money and spent a lot of time get, you know, with, their, with whatever type of uh, marketing he or she is doing to get those so-called new patients in the door. Now, it's important to realize that those people walking through the door, they're not new patients yet. They're there to check out the dentist to see if they want to become a new patient. So now the dentist does some sort of crappy whitening that doesn't work much or at all, virtually proving to that patient that the dentist is not the dentist they want to continue going to or bring their families to. And then they never return and you have a revolving door, and that's when dentists are, you start saying, oh, marketing doesn't work. Well, they, they just don't realize that they've shot themselves in the foot. Um, so so whitening, whitening can be an amazing practice builder, but only if you're able to achieve genuinely white teeth and really impress that, quote, new patient every time. 
And um, uh, you and I have previously talked about how core um, whitening um, is routinely successful on, on every case type. Uh, Mike, I have some, some slides here that we could show. Okay. And I think what you're looking at right now is a tetracycline case uh, and then a, a white and brown spot, a fluorosis type case, and even a dentinogenesis imperfecta case. So yes, core whitening is so effective, it can really tackle all of these. Um, but the point that I wanna really make is that um, these difficult cases are rather few and far between. So right. yeah, it's wonderful to be able to do this, but you're not gonna build your your cosmetic portion of your practice to a huge amount with those. So the main point is that the vast majority of your whitening cases are in the average category. Correct. So if core is so effective on those, those very difficult cases, just imagine how it works um, on your routine cases. And um, I think I've given you three slides here that show some routine cases. It's great to be able to do this, but these are not the cases that are really going to blast your practice. It's right. these right here. It's your routine ones that you're doing all the time. Um, so these three cases here I, I, I selected and, and their average, this is what you should be expecting every single time on your patients. Um, and so when you have your patients coming in and walking out saying, wow, you know, this is, this is incredible. You have really impressed those patients. Um, so on our website, if anybody goes on there, you're going to see, um, 400, yeah, actually more than 400 cases on, on the current website, but we're going to be. We're working on a new website that's going to be up in about two weeks, and we've got 1,500 cases. Uh, and I we've got a lot more than that, but I figured I'd cut it off at 1,500. Right. Now, we didn't ask for any of these photos. Uh, these are just core dentists who are so excited with the results that they send them to us to show, and they go, oh, my God, look at what I did. Um, and they want to show everybody else. Um, so when it, when it comes to building your practice and impressing patients and all the stuff we're going to talk about, about what happens when you do that. It's those average patients. That's your regular day-to-day -day patients that are the most important. And I know that there would be a dentist. We, if we randomly contacted 10 dentists right now, just out of the phone book, probably eight of them would think those before and afters were Photoshopped because they never had good vital bleaching results in their office like the ones that you're showing there so it's not that these are fake or they've been photoshopped or anything it's just that you gotta follow the steps and your patient has to follow the steps and do this right, right and you too can get results like this but in the beginning it looks almost too good to be true because most mm -hmm. of us have never had vital bleaching results that look half that good let alone yeah. that good and you'll notice on those slides that's why on virtually every one of them I have the name of the dentist and the city and state yeah. that they practice in on the photograph, yeah. you know, so it, it kind of gives, it, it, it kind of shows that I can't take someone else's photos and then I'm going to manipulate them or something like that. That, that well, just well, not all. Yeah. Not only that, somebody could call those doctors and ask, does this actually work? And they, exactly. pr they're proud of it. I'm sure they'd love to spread the good word. And once you know we, that it does work. That's what we hope for. <laughs> right. Exactly. Okay, that's great. I love I love how that looks, and I love that idea. And, and in fact, when you talk about getting new patients in that way, and you're right, they're not quite new patients yet, but people coming in for this bleaching deal and saying they don't expect much because it's free is it's kind of hilarious. That almost reminds me of the doctors and instructors in dental school who said make temporaries look ugly to make sure they come back for the permanent one. It's like, who doesn't come back for the permanent crown? Nobody oh wants God. to spend a thousand dollars on a piece of plastic. Don't justify <laughs> why, you, why you're making an ugly temp. And it's kind of like, don't justify why you're buying the cheapest bleaching gel. Why, why not just put Vaseline in syringes then if you don't, if, if patients don't care what it's gonna look like. 
because right. it's free. But I will say that I, the, the, one of the great things about making core trays for people, which is, of course, one part of the story, is that for us, we do digital scans now. So when a patient comes in for whitening and we do a digital scan to, to send a core to make the trays, we now have a digital scan on this patient that we can manipulate three-dimensionally and they can see some of their old silver fillings and, and other things. So not only does the whitening lead to more dentistry, but the ability to show somebody a scan of their teeth and be able to see that. Now you feel like a high-tech office because you're not taking conventional impressions. And um, right. this just gives you another chance to impress them. But with this technology and how impressive it seems, you really should have a good bleaching system to kind of back it up so that your whitening results impress them as much as your office and the scanning did. That's right. In my opinion. So, um, you know, it, it's funny that Dennis would say that. So um, whitening can't really be used, I would say, as a practice builder if it doesn't achieve truly white teeth every time. Um, you know, I don't like to use the words white teeth most of the time when you're talking to patients because they're picturing maybe toilet bowl white, but core actually right. gives people whiter teeth. Is that is that something that you used to kind of struggle with in the beginning or, or when you start seeing teeth literally get white and not just less yellow, you began using that word? Well, you know, the bottom line is uh, so many patients come in and they go, oh, I don't want to get, get, I've seen some people where their teeth are just way too white and they describe it. And it's like, okay, what you've seen, what you've seen is toilet, toilet bowl opaque porcelain mm -hmm. because yeah. natural teeth, no matter how white they get, they can't look anything other than natural. You have that translucency in there. So I think a lot of patients actually see patients with with bad veneers or bad jackets or even right. even dentures where you have this toilet bowl opacity on there and and patients don't want you know they they just don't want that type of thing to happen and so um and, and thank you for bringing that up because that that's a very common thing for people to mention and so and the nice thing you know is like i said no matter how white they get, natural teeth can't look anything but natural. Correct. That's a great point. And you're right. I mean, I feel like both of our current possible presidential candidates are in their like 80s and have these very opaque PFMs. And it's kind of, you do see people <laughs> with those teeth and you're right. It looks really, it looks really bad. And one of the great part about no prep veneers is that you know, what otherwise would look opaque and, and weird and just not real. You know, so with a B1 um, or even an OM1, no prep veneer at three tenths of a millimeter, it's letting some of the tooth show through. And so it's still real. So you're right. It's very difficult as long as you leave a natural tooth natural mm -hmm. for that tooth to look, for that tooth to look fake. And those three cases that you showed of just the regular people having this amazing whitening results. Talk a little bit about the effect of those people seeing their teeth now in the mirror, seeing them in the rear view mirror in their car with this natural lighting. And just, there's something that happens where people become obsessed with their teeth because they're kind of falling in love with them for the first time because maybe they didn't, they didn't like them before. They were fine in their teeth. They didn't have any yeah. complaints about them, but now they see them in this new state and talk about how that can affect a patient, their self-esteem, and how they feel about what's going on with the rest of their teeth? Well, the, 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 the great thing is, and, and this is great for the patients and for our practice, you know, patients typically, many times when you're whitening a patient, they've had professional whitening before. It didn't work very well. Or they have a, a friend that, that had it. But it, at any rate, they've heard that most of the time whitening doesn't work all that well, doesn't last all that long. So when you're able to get them in, and and like you say, if you do core whitening and follow every single step, you do it the right way. These patients are blown away. And they become infatuated with their teeth. And they, and they just, they just, you know, they're looking in the mirror all the time and and they're very, very excited. And um what will happen is now they start to notice things that they either never noticed before or they never cared about before. They're seeing right. those old 
the, the darker fillings and the darker crowns um, and you know veneers and even on molars. And they're saying, I don't like that. They're seeing the spaces, they're seeing the chips, seeing the uneven gingival margins, all, and they're seeing all of that, what they thought was minor cosmetic uh, uh, imperfections and they don't like it because they've gotten so excited. And that's when they start coming back in. And, you know, back when you and I first started doing whitening, all of the, the whitening companies, they said, oh, whitening is the gateway to other cosmetic dentistry. Well, that's true, but it wasn't at the time. Because if you right. can't get your patients that excited, if you can't get their teeth really white, then no, they're not excited. They're not going to be looking all the time. But if you, it is absolutely true when you really get those teeth white. And we hear it, you know, at the company, we, we hear from phone calls from dentists all the time. And they'll talk about how it had the, 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 the I don't want to say extreme whiteness because that sounds, that's, that's a, like a bad term, but I'm talking about ultimate whiteness, the stuff that the, the actual appearance that the patients were dreaming about, hoping right. they could get. Well, now um, that's caused a lot of trust in their dentist. They, they, they think their dentist walks on water now. Exactly. And, exactly. You know, and they, 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 they have loyalty and um, they just like a great restaurant that you go to, you find this great restaurant. It's, you know, it's beautiful in there. The service is wonderful. You get along well with them and the food's great. You go out and you want to tell everybody, you tell everybody about that. Well, when this happens, same thing. They, they, yeah. they're so appreciative of what you did. They feel like they owe it to you to tell everybody about you. And because you have actually made such a big difference in their smile, even though their teeth weren't all that dark to begin with, there's so much right. of a difference that their friends notice it and they ask them. And so those conversations come up. Um, and the, the, just from the trust factor, you know how often you tell patients that they need things? Some of it is optional and some of it is necessary treatment. And you show them how necessary it is and they still don't follow through. How many, how many millions of dollars do we have in our files of patients who never followed through? Well, now once yes. they trust you like that, they develop that kind of trust, now they start following through. So that's another thing we hear from, from our clients is that they started with core whitening just to be able to get good whitening results. And they didn't really expect all this other stuff to go along with it. And it, it makes a big difference. You know, it's funny, it reminds me a little bit of, well, just from a human nature perspective, like the really hot thing right now is Ozempic. You know, the, this weight loss injection that uh, was originally developed for people with, with diabetes, and then they were having such good luck losing weight with it that it was only a matter of time until Hollywood got a hold of it, and then, and then celebrities started using it to lose weight. And then other people, and then I know several dentists now who have lost a lot of weight with it. And for a while, you couldn't even get it. The people who needed it couldn't get it because so much was being used by other people who weren't medically obese, but just wanted to lose 15 pounds. And it's turned into this incredible phenomenon. And now there's another other companies uh, uh, advertising other like GLP-1 type injections on TV. And it's this huge thing. And it... it, it appears to work very well and kind of everybody wants to do it and talks about it and it reminds me of your before and afters because people are going to talk about it like a great movie like a great restaurant like a great weight loss injection because they weren't it, it, it exceeds their expectations by so much when they see the whitening that it's like oh this is what we've all been waiting for like i remember 30 years ago it was fen fen you know this combination of medications you yeah. could take and you could lose weight and then there ended up being heart issues and who knows what's going to happen with ozempic but certainly hydrogen peroxide carbon peroxide way safer i would guess and less side effects than say ozempic or or fenfen but it's this way to in a short period of time two weeks or whatever the average time might be for a, a core max case or an ultra case and you can speak to that a little bit too but this is the kind of dramatic before and after where there's no doubt people are going to tell other people and they're going to start to investigate because it's so dramatic and it's the kind of change that everybody 
hoped for. And it's not necessarily, I don't know if I'd call Ozempic and Fenfen like a shortcut, although it kind of is because you could do the same thing with diet and exercise. What I love about core is you can't do this with additional brushing and flossing. There's like nothing, right, right. there's no remedial homeopathic way to do this, although hydrogen peroxide is such a benign substance compared to even ibuprofen for that matter. So um, yeah. it's amazing to me. And so to your point, Rod, I think that when you see this kind of dramatic change, like you see with people with those epic, they are going to talk about it to friends and, and family. And I, I think you're going to see that people can't not talk about this because they're so excited about it. I'm the same way right now with my CPAP, believe it or not, Rod. I was diagnosed <laughs> with obstru with severe obstructive sleep apnea two months ago. Well, actually, it was longer than that, four months ago. And then I made myself an oral appliance and it got better, but not good enough. And now I'm using a combination of an oral appliance and a CPAP. And I feel so much better because I'm not having a, I'm not struggling to breathe 39 times yeah. per hour. It's now down to oh, once per you, hour. I can't club. stop talking to patients. I can't stop talking to patients about it. And yeah. at the end of everybody's hygiene recall, when I go in to do the exam, I'm like, hey, how'd you sleep last night? And like, oh, not very good. Why is that? Oh, I was up about, well, why is that? Oh, because of this or this. Oh, okay. Do you have high blood pressure? Yeah, I do. You've got these abfraction lesions too that we saw in your scan. And I'd like to connect a few dots for you here. And then I offer them the home sleep study unit to take home and see whether or not they have it. I just got a text earlier from my office manager saying, hey, you know, Greg, you know, that thin guy who you said uh, this, I, I hope he, I kind of hope he has it because I love having you know, thin people, not people like you and I, Rod, that have larger necks, but a thin person have it. And he was a, a 32, you know, and I was a 29. So his AHA is a 32. He's got severe obstructive sleep apnea, but he's he's thin. He's in shape. He, he looks good. And um, I can't wait. We haven't had his consult yet, but I can't wait to have his consult with him because I know how much better he's going to feel when he oh, is yeah. a month, two months after this solution. And so I feel it's the same way with this whitening where people aren't going to be able to help themselves from sharing with other people. Look at my teeth. I never dreamed this was possible. Yeah. So it does seem like those new patients who are coming in because you're giving them whitening for life or whatever. Um, think of the kind of rabid fans you would have if you committed to using a whitening system that, that really did work as opposed to, Oh, this is free. So patients don't expect much. Yeah. yeah. Well, exactly. Exactly. So I know that you have a story about, now I'm in California. You and I have always practiced in California. So I know Dr. Natasha Lee up in San Francisco, a past president of the CDA and teaches at the dental school that I went to, University of the uh, Pacific. You have a story about uh, about how you got involved with her because you guys didn't know each other. And she happened to right. use your product that I think had some amazing results. I think you have some pictures of it too, if you don't mind sharing those. Yeah, yeah. Well, th this, was, th this was great. And, and again, uh, this is just kind of a really interesting version of a story that we hear all the time. So um, anyway, um, Natasha had a patient come in to her. And um, uh, let's see, you can see the uh, slide here. And um, uh, he was a 55-year-old man with um, obviously spacing, um, ugly shape to his teeth and tetracycline staining and um she presented veneers you know she said we can fix the color we can fix the shape of your teeth we can fix the the, the spaces and he really appreciated it you know she said he was very attentive to what she was saying but then he said you know i'm 55 i'm very happily married my kids are grown and you know doc if you had told me even 10 years ago, I might have thought about it. But for that amount of money to do all those veneers now, I, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think I'm up for that. And so then she said to him, well, you know, I've heard of this whitening system. I've never tried it. It's called core whitening. And supposedly, it has at least a significant effect on tetracycline staining. And if you'd like, we can try it. He said, well, heck yeah. You know, let's do that. And so she used the um, the core ultra T kit and the T stands for um, tetracycline. And that's the same kit you would use for dentinogenesis imperfecta. We have, we have a, a number of different kits depending upon 
uh, the type of case you have, the expectations of your patient, et cetera. And so anyway, um, I'll show you here the results that she got. And he was just blown away, but as blown away as he was, she was way more. She was exactly. like, oh right. my God. And so she sent me an email. Now, I'm sorry. Uh, now, I had never met Natasha. And, um, you know, since then, um, her name has come up with so many of her ex-students who all just loved her to death. But anyway, she was so excited. She said, I just want to show you these results that we got. And she told me the story that I just told you. And so I said to her, I, I, I said, well, Natasha, I said, I, congratulations. You obviously followed all the steps properly. You did a great job. Um, and don't be surprised. You know, this patient is going to get so excited about the new color of his teeth and he's going to keep looking and looking. Don't be surprised if he calls you up later and says he wants to do those veneers. So about two weeks later, I get an email from Natasha and she says, you know, in a very humorous way, um, she says, guess what happened today? We just got a phone call from the patient and now he wants to come in and talk about how to get started doing those veneers. And, uh, you know, now this isn't the norm. I mean, this isn't going to happen to right. your practice every day. Uh, but it does happen. But it's it's in those other minimal ways, you know, when they when they're looking and they find the little space here, the chip there, the little crookedness, so it leads to Invisalign or or short term orthodontics or whatever, and all the other stuff. Um, it's so common, and I just, Mike, I can't tell you how much how much of a smile this puts on my face when I see this type of stuff that the uh, system that I created does for for not only the patients but for my dentist colleagues. It's just a lot of fun. well. You know that this patient, this 55-year-old male, had was probably relentlessly teased in grade school and probably high school yeah. and college and probably hid his smile and probably was nervous on, on dates and, and, and meeting people. And it's so revolutionary. The other person who's really happy is the laboratory technician that Natasha is going to send this case to because right. now we're not trying to block out that tetracycline stain with these veneers and having to opaque the inside or might make them very opaque. We can actually use translucent veneers here for a more oh, yeah. natural look to close those spaces. And we've got this uh, lightened superstructure underneath it, which is gonna make it a lot easier and the veneers look a lot better as well. So, you know, the, the thing that I thought was funny when you um, talked about that 55 year old man is in his reasons for not doing the veneers was I'm very happily married, which cracks me up. It's like, um, yeah, yeah I, yeah, I feel like men a lot of times when we propose and the woman says I do, I think we see like a checkered flag where we're like, all oh, right, God. self improvement, <laughs> self improvement stops here. Uh, not gonna, don't, no not need to lose go any to weight hell. anymore. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. No <laughs> need to lose any weight. Why whiten my teeth? She fell in love with these gray teeth, uh, but it's kind of like, yeah, it is kind of funny. It's like I, you know. I'm happily married. It's like, would you be more happily married if you felt sexier? I don't know if you feel sexier, but you probably do with teeth like that. I would be smiling at my wife all the time, knowing that she's, she must be loving what she's seeing here. So that's funny that he would say being happily married is not a reason to do it. But those are, again, shocking results. I mean, it doesn't matter who, you don't even, I mean, I think a dentist would be more shocked than a patient would like a patient here is whitening and they go oh yeah those are whiter and but she I think was. you have to be a dentist to go yeah i think you have to be a dentist to go oh my god i'm sure it's like i remember the first time i corrected a crossbite a posterior crossbite with clear aligners and the patient came in and i had a bite together and the tooth had jumped <laughs> over and i said i can't believe that worked and the patient <laughs> said you can't believe it worked i'm like well, I mean, we this is the first time I've corrected one in that fashion. And I'm sure Natasha might, must have looked at this and said to the patient, I can't believe it worked this well, because she must have been even more shocked seeing all the times she had tried to bleach tetracycline and it didn't yeah. work at all. Yeah. So that's absolutely. amazing. That's fantastic. <laughs> so you, we already talked about you don't like the idea of Dennis promoting um, – Free, but mark, free bleaching to new patients if they're not going to have a bleach that 
doesn't work. What do you think about doctors marketing specifically for cosmetic patients? Because you have, you've written two books on marketing. And I think that one of the things you said that really shook me in the very beginning was don't market specifically for cosmetic patients. And I, I think that's right. a really, um, it, it's counterintuitive. Everybody thinks we should, oh, let's put veneer before and afters on there and, and just market mm -hmm. for these people or just market for people who are, you know, independently wealthy, uh, want can, cosmetic dentistry, uh, don't have any pulpal tissue left, so we don't have to anesthetize and they won't need root canals. You know, kind of this dream patient that we're advertising for. But what do you think right. is a better way for dentists to market? Well, um, you know, the, the, as you mentioned, I, I wrote those two books on, on dental marketing, uh, and they were called um, The No Coupon Marketable Dentist Volume 1 and 2. Um, and they're, they're, they're years out of print, but the whole, the key there was no coupon. The, the point was let's market for really good patients, not revolving door, you know, type of patients. So I, you know, for my entire career, I've been very serious in, in, in learning about marketing. So now one of the things I will tell you is that successful marketing absolutely depends on having a significant number of people in your target audience who want what you're selling and they're ready to act right now. Right. And if that happens, you're going to get a great return on investment. But when it comes to what uh, um, cosmetic dentistry, it's the worst because first of all, how many people ever their whole life get significant cosmetic dentistry? Oh, maybe a little chip here, you know, that, that, but I'm talking about actual, you know, what we think of as cosmetic cases. So there's not many of those out there, but right. worse than that is there's only a tiny little window of time in their entire life where they're interested in. Sure. Maybe right. for years, they don't like their smile, you know, et cetera, but they don't do anything about it. They don't tell their dentist about it, anything, but all of a sudden something happens. Either they're fed up. It's just, it's time or a friend of theirs or next door neighbor or whatever has cosmetic dentistry and they go, doggone it, that's what I want. And they look for somebody, they get it done, and then they never want it again. So even, even as few people as it is, given that it's such a tiny window of time in their whole life, if you're marketing only for cosmetic dentistry, good luck. You're not going to get any response. Now, that's not to right. say that in your cures, or that you send out, or in whatever marketing you do, oh, mention cosmetic dentistry, um, mention being highly trained in it, or w whatever. Yeah, that that's great. But as far as marketing just for that, um, maybe one or two people in the country have been yeah. successful at that in their particular areas, but yeah. believe me, just in general, it ain't going to happen. It's just not going to work. Yeah, and you're so right about that window of time. This isn't endo. There's no window of time for endo. When your tooth starts right. throbbing, you're going to go have endo done. When your tooth breaks, you're having a crown. The window just grabs you by the neck and go, hey, I'm the window. It's op I'm open. Right. Let's do this. But you're right. There has to be like a triggering event, as they would say, in the insurance industry. And um, I've seen a lot of men. In their 50, well, that's what's funny about him saying he's happily married because I get what he's saying. Because if a man is getting a divorce, then all bets are off. You just need one of your young back, female dental back assistants. Back to the gym. You would, look so, you would look so handsome with those spaces closed and those teeth white. Oh, my God, you would look handsome. And they're like, uh, where's my checkbook? When, when do I pay? How do we get started on this? Uh, or a man all of a sudden who you hear a Harley, like in the parking lot, like a midlife crisis. When you hear a midlife crisis going on, that window is opening and you have that short period of time. So you're right. It's not necessarily if they're sitting at home and you're marketing to them, that window may not be open if they're if they're happily married. The window didn't open for Natasha's patient until he saw and loved his teeth for the first time instead of hating yeah. those tetracycline teeth. He wanted to treat them better. He wanted to invest more in them. He was like, oh, my God, I, I did. I never thought, he probably thought he wasn't worthy of having a beautiful smile or whatever. I'm not a therapist, but you can, I can picture all the emotions that he, he might've felt. So to your point, it does make a lot of sense yeah. to just focus on getting 
the new patients, yeah, in the door because everybody needs a cleaning. The window for cleanings is pretty much open 24-7 for, for the most part for people. You do have to just kind of get them in and then you have the opportunity to have this discussion with them. You know, I've always liked the idea and I still might do it of just bleaching using the core whitening on just my upper teeth and not my lower teeth. And being mm -hmm. able to show patients, you know, a before and after without having to go get a picture. Is that an effective strategy? The whitening just the uppers? For me, for me, just to show patients. Here's <clears throat> here's what I did and here's how they started. Well, I, I mean, don't I guess know. I that looks a little bit too ridiculous. I'll tell you what I what I've done <laughs> in that respect. Trainer. Uh huh. Um, as you know, and as you've seen. Um, when when dentists become uh, clients of uh, you know of core whitening in their startup kit, they get a book of I don't know yeah close to thirty before and after pictures yeah one of those cases in there and you might not know this is me I'm one of those cases oh really oh I didn't and know that and because I had congenitally dark teeth my whole life and I never thought about it in fact I've had people say well because of your dark teeth is that why you got so interested in whitening back in 1977. <laughs> no, it had nothing to do with it. And so I had a, a, a crown over here on the first, first premolar. And it was actually a little bit lighter than my other teeth. But I never noticed it. And so I tried different types of whitening for years. Just really didn't do anything for my teeth. And then when we, when I came up with the, with the technique of deep bleaching, which has morphed into core whitening, then I got, you know, white teeth. And it, was, right. and it was crazy. So I have this. So in my in in that booklet in in the pre-op, you see that crown. It's a little lighter than my natural teeth. Mm -hmm. And then in the after photo, you see that crown sticks out like a sore thumb. So when I would walk into the operatory, and patients would would have their book, I'd take their book, and I'd flip it to the page that where I'm I'm the, ah, the, the patient, mm -hmm. and all right. they see is my teeth. They don't know it's me. And, I, and I'll say, see, look at this guy. And I hold up shade guys and everything. And yeah, wow. And this is what his teeth looked like. And he had a, he had this whitening done, you know, um, 10 years ago. Oh, really? In fact, would you like to see what his teeth looked like right this moment? And they look at me like, huh? And I go like this. And I don't know. I don't know if the camera can see or not. Can you see that? I, saw, I, I think I saw gold. But yeah, I can't. No, it's a little this, small. But His dark tooth right there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. And they go, oh, my God, that's you. They sold. <laughs> so that's I did, I did that. That's not that different from me doing, from, from me doing uh, white on the upper, yeah. yellow on the lower. I won't even brush my lower rod. I'll get it so yellow yeah. that it looks like tetracycline. But that's almost the same, uh, same kind of thing. But yes. that's fantastic. I got to go back. I've got those books everywhere. I got to go back and look for your case and then text you when I find it and let you know that I found your case. Um, so yeah, if we're, if we're gonna, if we're gonna stay away from marketing specifically for cosmetic patients and just try to get people in the door and then excite them and, and educate them, I know that you found the most effective way to do it was to add some questions to your, your health history for new patients or questions when you were yeah. seeing recall patients and they would update it. Can you kind of go over those questions and tell us what you found to be the best way to judge a patient's interest in well, this? Yeah, sure. Um, the, the, for me, and Mike, with your personality, you're probably really good at this. And I know that there's a lot of dentists out there that are good at presenting, um, asking their patients if they're interested in cosmetic dentistry. I have a hard time doing that. It just, it doesn't flow for me. Um, so for instance, um, and I'm going to show you a video coming up here okay. about what I'm talking about, but um, if I were to have a patient by the name of John and I were to say, hey, John, um, have you ever thought about um, whitening your teeth? I would be afraid that this is what John in his mind would be Hi, saying, John. hearing me say. I'm Dr. Curthy. How are you doing today? Well, John, your teeth are really ugly, man. You need to whiten your teeth. In, in my uh, mind, uh, when I would would ever bring something up to a patient, I was scared to death that they were seeing this horror film like I just showed. Uh, and, and so it, it, it made me very apprehensive. And 
I, again, I know there are a lot of dentists that are able to do that and do it well, but I've talked to so many dentists who feel exactly the same way I do. And so I, I wanted to be able to let my patients know that I am really good at cosmetic dentistry and I really enjoy doing it. And so, you know, you get all this stuff up all over your office, making sure your office looks looks high tech and modern and all the, the, the cosmetic things on the, you know, showing smiles on the walls and things like that. But I wanted to add a question to my, to my forms. And um, so I want to ask you th this question to try to decide, to find out if they would like me to talk about cosmetic dentistry. And so um, here, and, and I call this the smile evaluation form. So I added this, this question, are you happy with the appearance of your teeth, gums and smile, yes or no? Well, if they, if they mark no, I felt, okay, I can go start talking to them, you know, about, you know, their, their cosmetics. Well, right. uh, I, was, I was wrong because then, you know, many patients would say, well, yeah, I'm not really happy with my smile, but I don't want to talk about it. You know, I don't want to do <laughs> anything about it. So I went back to the drawing board and I added this next question. Would you like to discuss enhancing the appearance of your smile? Yes or no. Now, I knew that if they marked that they weren't happy and that, yes, they wanted to talk about it, that meant I could start talking about it. You know, I had it nailed down. Well, I was wrong again because this one day, this, um, oh, this is very attractive gal in maybe her late 20s came in and she had a diastema between eight and nine that you could drive a truck through. And she marked that, are you happy with your appearance? No. You want to talk about it? Yes. So anyway, I start talking about how we can close that diastema. And I'm telling you, Mike, she became so insulted. She pointed to it. She said, no, that's sexy. I just want to whiten my teeth. So, I, And I'm telling you, she was so offended that I felt like crawling under the dental chair. And so I added this next question. What don't you like about your smile? Okay, now I know I've got it nailed now. Now I'm going to know everything. And again, I was wrong because people would mark, yes, I'm happy with my smile. So I wouldn't talk about anything. And then after the appointment, as they're walking out, they look at me and say, hey, doc, do you do a teeth whitening? And I say, well, yeah, but you said you're happy with your, your smile. Oh, yeah, I am. My teeth are, are nice and straight and, you know, et cetera. So then I learned that many people don't associate whitening with other cosmetic appearances of their teeth. So I added this final question and it says, would you like to discuss how to make your teeth white? And notice that I have white in all caps and in bold. And, and, I, and I do that because so many people have had whitening that didn't work or they have friends that, that, that were, it didn't work on them. And I want them to know, um, uh, that we're able to truly get their teeth white. And Mike, this one thing, well, this, this evaluation form then led to me doing some other things that I do in addition to this, but just this form here, doing nothing else, at least increased the cosmetic load in my practice by at least five times. So okay. it was, um, it was huge, really huge. Yeah, that's great. I love that idea of you doing that. And you're right. You're always, you know, I assume you're here because of these tetracycline stains, or I assume you're here because this space is a, is a wolf trap that you're about to, to step into. You know, when we scan people now with our scanner, I walk in to do an exam and their, their arches, their teeth are already up on the screen. I just walk in, I'll say, so what do you think about these teeth? You know, I just leave it up to them. And, and, and not eight, I swear, Rod, eight out of 10 people say, Oh, I didn't know they were that ugly. I'm like, whoa, that's a little harsh, but that's what we're here to, we can help you with that. Don't worry about it. And so I'm, yeah, in a, in a sense, I'm letting them kind of diagnose it themselves or, because all you can really say is, well, how, how do you feel about this space between your front teeth? And is you're right. I've had patients tell me, uh, I don't know if anyone said it's sexy, but people say they'd be written out of the will, the family will, if they got rid of it because mom has it as well or, or whatever, so you have to be careful. So I like that. I like that no stress way of doing it, where they're sitting and just filling it out on their own, 
because even to ask the questions in person, yeah. it's, it feels like the patient knows that I want them to give a certain answer. It's like when we try in veneers, Rod. I try the veneers in with the try and paste, and then I leave the – in fact, I tell the patient, let's close your lips. We're going to give that a minute or two to get warm and wet. And I just walk out of the room, and then my right. assistant hands him the mirror, and my assistant talks to the patient about it. Because I don't want to say, they look amazing, and then ask the patient, what do you think? Because I'm the expert, and I just said it looked amazing, and now I'm jamming this aesthetic result down their throat. So I like your right. way of doing those uh, questions like that, where they can um, do it just peacefully and do it on their own without feeling any pressure from the dentist. And speaking of veneers, when we do veneers now or other cosmetic changes, we're because of CAD CAM technology and things like that, we're able to do mock-ups. And I mean, we could do it in the past with the diagnostic wax up. It's just faster now. And I'll still do a putty wash of that printed 3D model and put it in the patient's mouth, you know, especially with diastomus to show them real quickly with some bisacryl how it would look so we can kind of preview their smile. And of course, we can preview it with the temporaries as well. But whitening's really never had something like that. We've had your before and after books, which are outstanding. But the patient's never been able to really see what it would look like in their own mouth. I know that you, right. you've used preview software to kind of give the patient an idea about this. And it can work for all cosmetic cases. I just think most dentists think of, don't think of using it for whitening. Tell right. me a little about your experience with that kind of software. Well, um, you know, the, for, for imaging software... Um, oh my goodness, there are so many brands out there and, and anywhere from really simple, simple stuff to things that you need, you know, a, a year course on to learn how to use. Um, and the point is that, that for someone to fill out that smile evaluation form and whether it's a recall patient, because you have them update that form every time or a brand new patient, when they've gotten up the courage to actually invite you to talk to them about it they're emotional well now if you can do imaging like this like what you're you're seeing on the screen and let them see it oh man now what they have conjured up in their mind and now they're actually seeing it on the screen is a huge deal um so when when you use that smile evaluation form and in addition to cosmetic imaging, when they mark, yes, they're interested in talking about it, whether it's whitening or any other type of thing. If you have a really, really simple camera, and I'm talking about a camera is just pick it up and point and shoot, no adjustments whatsoever. And um, ideally, it would be a dental camera with some sort of dental light on it so that you don't get shadowing under the lips. And then you have a super simple um, uh, software like the one you're looking at right here, where your assistants can do that right chair side in a handful of minutes. I mean, it's really, really fast. And have that before you even walk into the room. It's very, very powerful. Now, the one I'm showing here is a company called Preview, and I put up their website. Now, first of all, no, I have nothing to do with this company. I don't know the ownership of this company. I have no business. To, I am no dealings with them whatsoever. It's just that this is one that I know is easy to, um, to work with. So you might want to check it out. I looked at their website and um, they, they, they offer a lot of training. It seems financially uh, viable. They, they give you the software and some stock images to play with to make sure you see how easy it is. But anyway, uh, it, 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 it's virtually a slam dunk when, when you're using you know, a, 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 a um, cosmetic imaging like this. I, I can't recommend it highly enough right. to, to do something. Not necessarily this company, but just, you know, go right. look, at, you know, look at any company. Um, and I know a lot of dentists do cosmetic imaging on every patient. Again, that's not my thing. I, I, I have a feeling when that happens, I know if I was the patient, I would be thinking, okay, they're trying to sell me on something. They're yeah, trying to yeah, shove yeah. it down my throat. And um, given that that's what I would think if I was a patient, that makes me uncomfortable to do that. But when they've right. asked for it, by doing this, it's almost a slam dunk. Well, I think one of the more, you're right. Uh, uh, we don't do it on everybody. We don't want to make it seem like everybody, who can, if you go to this office, all they're going to talk to you about is 
Invisalign, everybody needs Invisalign or everybody needs this or everybody yeah. needs that. And it's really not like that. It's got to be more customized and it's got to be, you've got to, you know, again, you're dealing with the patient's self-esteem. You have to take, be very careful when you do this stuff. And I think one of the most effective ways, and I, I was telling you this right before we started recording, was that both my hygienists uh, at work have now, we have straightened their teeth with clear aligners. Uh, and then we did maxillary veneers, no prep veneers on them because we put their teeth in the right, right. position to do no prep. We didn't just leave the teeth where they were. So we have a five millimeter thick veneer. We put the teeth in the proper position so that we could put no preps and still have a perfect arch. And now they're both doing pore whitening on uh, their lower teeth because they both picked OM1 or OMG1 as, I, as it looks sometimes. But again, in a thinner <laughs> veneer, you can get away with OM1. Um, but I do want to rename it OMG for the most part. But uh, when you're doing this, um, and then we've got the core whitening, you said you had a story about uh, Kathy from, from your oh. practice and what it has. When, when I mentioned that I was doing this on, on Sam and Heather, you're like, oh, yeah, I, I, I had a, uh, something like that happen. Tell me about Kathy and the effect, the effect she had in your practice and, and how many patients started treatment as a result of her. Oh my God. Yeah. So anyway, um, I have always done cosmetic dentistry at no charge um, for my staff members um, that, that are long-term type staff members. Right. And it's always worked out really well for me because they get really charged up and they can show patients, et cetera. But now Kathy, Kathy is such a lovely gal. Um, she's wonderful. She's always smiling and she's always friendly. And the patients just absolutely love her. Now, Kathy's smile when she first started working for me, um, her teeth were were crooked, not tremendously, but just generally, a little in and out, you know, rotations and things like that. And she had, God, I don't know how many anterior crowns that were ob looked like they'd been done by different dentists in different companies or countries <laughs> and I, they, they were all the crowns were ugly they were all different colors some of them were pfms with a black line just terrible right. and she had the most uneven gingival margin that i ever remember seeing it was like a roller coaster and um and she, and she had a narrow arch. So, and she was really, really self-conscious because of working as a dental assistant. Right. So um, pretty early on, I started treating her. Now, the first thing I did was a gum lift to even out those gingival margins. And it was, it was very invasive. And I know this has been oh, yeah. popular over the last 15 years or so. I, I started doing this in 1978. So I've been doing it for a long time. So after the surgery... That alone made a huge difference. Then after the healing, we did core whitening and then did porcelain, you know, jackets and veneers, et cetera. And, you know, on, on the bicuspids and the first molars, uh, filled out the, 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 the facial to give her a wider arch. And I'm telling you the before and after photos, wow, just startling. And, um, she has kind of a rounded face. And so I made, you know, the outline of the teeth, you know, mimic that a little bit and it just fit her so well. And so when patients would mark on the smile evaluation form that they were interested in some sort of cosmetic dentistry, Kathy would pull out all those great pre-op photos and the great post-op photos. And she had put in a, you know, glossy photos in a book and she would start showing them her own case and then okay. she'd look at them and she'd smile and the patients would just go wild. And I can't tell you how many times I walked in the operatory for a new patient. And before even being able to say hello to them, they would say, I want what you did on her. I want you to do that on me. And um, it was just wonderful. And not that everybody is going to have a Kathy in their, in their office, right. but this type of thing just works. If you have the type of employees, number one, if your employees like you and they respect you and they think you're a great dentist, like, you know, with, with Kathy, when she, when she would be going over with her photos, well, the whole time she'd be telling them how talented Dr. Kurthy is and how gentle and how even with the surgery and everything, she never felt anything. And so if, if you're able to do um, cosmetic dentistry of any sort, on 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 your your staff 
it is such a benefit, not only to your staff, but to your practice, but only if those staff members become really excited and they just want to tell everybody about it because, you know, excitement is infectious. And yeah. if for some reason the dentist doesn't want to go to the extent of doing a lot of cosmetic dentistry, I mean, at least with core whitening, do it on your staff, but you, on right. all of them, it's, it's of no value yeah. if you don't get some really good pre-op pictures. You've got to, you know, post-op pictures, yeah, that's great too, but you know what? When when your staff member standing in front of the patient, there's the pro, there's the post op. <laughs> but as long yeah, as exactly. them, yeah, as long as you can show them that pre op, and then they see it in person, you know, yeah. right in front of them, and that's seeing is believing to the ultimate. Um, that's and such a and huge thing. And and it's super easy for patients to think that oh, this is genetic. She was born like this. Of course, she looks that good. I never looked that good. And that's why you need to see that before. Whether it has to be before pictures. Uh, Kathy yeah. should have almost just worn a t-shirt every day that showed her before picture on it. And then she could yeah. smile at it to make it really easy for her to see. But um, that is the perfect employee. You want the best looking employee with the most jacked up teeth. So you get that super dramatic before and after where it's yeah. like, you look at her and you're like, oh yeah, she's cute with those teeth. And then afterwards it's like, oh my God, she's a 10 kind of thing. Or he, <laughs> like if Natasha's patient, that 55 year old guy worked in the front office of Natasha's office, he would be telling everybody as well. He could not tell anybody who came in the door about how amazing Natasha is with what she can do. Um, I, as we wrap this up, Rod, I know that you had something written down that you wanted to read. You wanted to give our viewers the opportunity to take a picture sure. of because you're very particular about the wording on this. Tell me a little about that. You can go ahead and throw it up on the screen if yeah. you would. Well, one day I had this gentleman come in um, and he he really um, he didn't want to have whitening done, and you know marked that on the form. And we ended up doing three anterior composites on him, and then later his wife did core whitening, and she went wild. She just went wild <laughs> of the results, and so now you know whether he wanted to get what she had or whether she said you're doing this. Um, he called and he wanted to to do it. So we brought him in and I I explained to him that, yeah, we can do the core whitening, but you know, what's going to have to happen is those, you know, three fillings we did, you know, those bondings on your, your, your front teeth, we're going to have, they're not going to whiten and we're going to have to replace those. He was not happy. Um, he ended up doing it and replacing them at his own cost because the insurance isn't going to cover them again. Um, so he went ahead and did it, but he was really not happy. So I, a, after that, I thought, um, you know, I, 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 I have to do something about that. So after that, every time I was going to do any restorative on the anterior, I would inform the patient and, and let me show you the script here. So before we would schedule the next visit, when I would, when I would be given a slip showing we were going to be doing something. Uh, you know, the composite, a uh, veneer, whatever on the, on the anterior, I would use this script. And, you know, I would say, um, Jane or John, at your next visit, we're going to be doing your filling or crown or whatever. Um, um, as your dentist, I need to explain something first. Now, I know that on your form, you marked that you're not interested in whitening. And Jane, that's perfectly fine. But I just need to inform you that if at a later time, you know, you, you later de uh, decide to have your teeth whitened, that filling or crown or veneer isn't going to whiten. It's not going to whiten. And we'd likely need to replace it to make it match the newly whitened teeth. This could be in a month or in five or more years. And it's likely that your insurance would not cover the replacement of that restoration that we're already going to do. So if you think you'd ever want whitening, it's a good idea to do it before we do that crown or veneer. Well, Mike, we were just amazed by how many people then decided to do whitening. And after a couple months of doing this, my wife was my office manager. Uh, she started keeping track. She kept track for exactly six months. And what we found is that one out of every three of our patients that I had done this with went for whitening. So we started doing whitening in our practice all the time. I, it was it was crazy. 
how it worked. And don't forget that that we were using, you know, the 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 core whitening. And actually, before that, it was deep bleaching, which is what what morphed into core whitening. And so all of that other good stuff, as far as the patients, then all of those patients looking in their mouths and asking for more um, dentistry, more cosmetic dentistry, and telling all their friends, etc. Um, all of this together, and it all revolves around that that smiley evaluation form. I I could not even estimate how many times more cosmetic dentistry we ended up doing than before that smile evaluation. It was just yeah. um, night and day, to say the least. Right. Well, that's great, Rod. And I don't know any bit dentist who could have watched this and seen the before and afters that you showed and not be at least curious enough about this system to order it for their staff members and do the, do the full thing. Go to the core website and I'll let you give the address in a minute, Rod, but do the full thing. Make the trays for them. Don't try to cheat this. Do it the way Rod intended it to be done. Do it the way that got those great results that you just saw that got you so interested in it that you now want to try it on your staff and at least do Rod, you know, the courtesy of doing it the way you're supposed to do it. Follow the directions. Make sure that your staff uses the desensitizer before if they're going to use like the core max for example before and after the, the nighttime bleach where you've got the desensitizer that goes on do the steps the way they're supposed to be done prove to yourself that it works get some mm -hmm. amazing results and then watch what happens when your staff you know when somebody's interested in whitening now at your staff's gonna be jumping over each other to show to show yeah. them the multiple smiles where it's gotten better what's the website what's the best way for a doctor to get started right the website is is corewhitening.com and and of course core is spelled k o r so just corewhitening.com yeah and go check it out and do it you know do it like we do anything else in dentistry try it out on your staff or your relatives or whoever first but in this case you're going to want to do it on your staff first because having live living salespeople and models showing how amazing it can be do my idea put their before on a t-shirt and make them wear that every day at work and uh, so people can see the before and the after. Rod, as always, thank you for taking some time out of your busy schedule to speak with us tonight. Well, thanks, Mike. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was great. Thank you. I love doing deep dives and a deep dive into a whitening system that actually works as well worth it. So thank you so much for joining us, Rod, and thank you to the commercial supporter of this program, Evolve Dental Technologies. That will conclude our program. We hope you will join us again next time on Inside Dentistry streaming channel. So on behalf of Rod, myself, and all of us here at Inside Dentistry, I want to thank you for your time and your continued commitment to quality dentistry.